rage on that beat going crazy. Hello everybody, and I saw my wingo. Okay, I was I was about to make a joke that nobody was gonna get um this early on. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this is a new drawing. Obviously, you haven't seen it before. This was a new challenge for me too because I was doing a commission. I was commissioned by my brother. To draw him for his um, his business, he has a business where him and his wife sell soaps and bath bombs, candles, cheesecakes, and things of that sort, like self care things, that sort of a thing. Um, and he wanted a face, you know, for his company, so I redrew him in a cartoony style honestly speaking i don't know what my style is turning into because it's not cartoon anymore it's looking more real but i don't mind i've always liked the semi-realistic sort of an art style the um, the sort of art styles that i really really like and i hope reflects in my art um it's boondocks cowboy bebop and Prince of Egypt, interestingly enough, I like those three art styles. I like, I'm not sure what it is about each art style that draws me to it, but I try to reflect that in my art. I'm not sure if that actually is what it is, but you know, yeah, that, <laughs> that's what I try. That's what I try to do. Um, this particular picture was interesting it was hard to do because yet again i cropped it weird and a lot of a couple of the things that i wanted in the picture got cropped out and then some of the things that i didn't need in the picture got pulled in i.e the top of his head because the top of his head wasn't you didn't see that much of his dress obviously you saw like the part on his forehead but like i think it's about like an inch of the dread at the top that you don't see in the original picture, but it made the composition more interesting, I think, with more dreads instead of the, just the whole top half of his head being cut off. I didn't want it to have like, what is it, what is it called? Fro floating head syndrome? Missing limb syndrome? It's some sort of a phrase that my teachers coined about chopping off certain parts of the body in a picture's composition. But, you know, what else? What a, uh, 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 I'm not, uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm even speaking English at this point. Um, I like this picture a lot because it challenged me in a lot of different ways. Um, I had never drawn dreads before. I had never drawn something as complex as a, well, no, that's not true. I've drawn things complex. But like a watch is very complex. It has very small pieces, like as like as I'm drawing here. And I feel still feel like I might have not, got, not gotten all the details that I wanted in the watch, but I got enough for it to translate. It's the thing. But, and I really actually enjoyed drawing that watch, which 
seems, you know, counterintuitive considering I don't really like putting a whole lot of work into little tiny things that you don't see. But that watch is probably my favorite part of the entire picture, to be honest with you. I like the watch and I like the hands, but mostly the watch. <laughs> um, I'll probably come back during inking, give a couple thoughts, then I'll also come back during the coloring and give a couple more thoughts, but that's all I have to say for now. Well, that wasn't very long, but I'm back here. I'm back, you know, in the inking. Eyebrows, always important. Always do individual strokes. I'm getting better at eyebrows, I think, than I used to be. But what I came back for, actually, was the hair. My brother has dreadlocks. Or should I call it? Would it be more appropriate to just call them locks? My brother has locks. And so, I've never drawn locks before. I've done curly hair. I've drawn wash and goes, twist outs, I've drawn twists, I've drawn ponytails, braid, box braids, and I've also drawn scalp braids, but I had never done dreads, and it was very interesting the way my brain decided to work on this one, because it was just like, ah, yes, it's just twisted hair, all the hair is twisted into one direction, so all, everything needs to go in one direction sort of similar to I'm probably about to mention a whole bunch of hairstyles and no like very few percent of you actually uh, know and understand what I'm talking about but like um what do you call them straw twit straw curls straw curls where it literally is you wrapping a piece of hair around a straw and the diameter of the straw is you know what the diameter of the curl was that's what the dress reminded me of just like so that's what I'm gonna mimic that's as close as I can think of to the texture of a dread so that was what I did I, I flipped this picture back and forth a couple times and I was just like this looks very 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 weird and very very wrong and it was because I just I had just misplaced the eyes it looked like him but I misplaced the eyes and that's a big no-no eyes need to be in the right spot obviously so I moved the eyes around a couple times. Um, I, 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 I already said I really enjoyed this picture. I just really enjoyed the different aspects of this picture. I like drawing the dread, the locks. I like drawing the locks. I like drawing the facial hair, the eyebrows, the watch, that sort of thing. It, it was fun, and I want to do it again. Like my commissions are open as of right now you know so if you want a portrait done I can do that you can just go to my Instagram DM me if you want a portrait done I enjoy new and challenging things I usually only do single portraits honestly though because they just take with my process they take a bit of time because I'm just really weird and 
like I need everything to be exactly right or it, 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 it's just not gonna work for me <laughs> so if you want a portrait done it might take a little time but the end result will be nice It'll come out looking similar to what this one came out looking like. You know, like you or whomever you're getting the portrait done of.
this is where I let the base colors. I typically do this so that I know, generally speaking, what it's gonna end up looking like. If I need to change the hue or saturation of anything. Um, I really like drawing this. That was like the, like I said, I don't think I said that. There was interesting light in this room because there were light coming from windows, but then there was an overhead light that was actually behind him, which was yellow. It was a yellow light, and then light coming from the windows was obviously daylight. So it was sort of a neutral blue ish looking light. So shading this was interesting. In my mind, when I draw pictures for myself I typically only make light come from one direction but in the real world that's not how things work light comes from many different directions and light also bounces off of different surfaces to create different kind of light and so I really struggled with that on this drawing because just when I was looking at the picture just the way the light was hitting everything didn't make sense to me and so I had to sit back and actually think about what was going on. And when I thought about it, I was like, ah, I get it. I know where this is coming from. This is coming from a different place. And when you analyze drawings and, or rather pictures like that, analyze real pictures like that, you get to understand the way light works better. And that's what I learned through this drawing because I, I think I knew it previously I just was not you know enacting it putting it to, in my drawings obviously I like I said before I usually only make light come from one direction I don't have any sort of complex lights I don't make light bounce off of other things to add light to areas that aren't in direct um, a view of the light source but through this drawing I learned that and I'm starting to incorporate into my drawings now I really enjoyed doing this face I really did like I like drawing faces faces are usually my favorite part of a picture but like I really really did enjoy doing this face like I like adding light to face I said it in a previous video adding light to face brings parts of the face forward adding shadow pushes it back and I just like seeing that happen I've wa I watch back my video quite a bit not even for editing purposes at this point just because I like to watch my process I don't know if that's narcissistic I just like to see how things come together and it's, it's for my own entertainment uh, I was gonna say obviously it was for my own entertainment when I watch my uh, drawings back, but I don't care. I'll spend 30 minutes <laughs> watching my own drawing process, even though it probably took like hours. Like I, but I love to do it. What I'm doing here is that like the very, very intense shadows. Those are the only ones that I do like a cell shading or like a hard shading for. But everything else, I've started to do just an airbrush with. I used to only do cell shading and then I changed to like cell shading and this like soft airbrush look but now it's mostly airbrush and then like very very few spots on the face it's done with this hard cell shading um I, I found something new on this in this drawing in particular that is quite challenging and it's when you're doing the under eye trying not to make the eyes look like they're popping out of the head because there is a shadow that's cast down there obviously because your eye does protrude out just a bit so there's a shadow cast under the eye and I was having a real hard time trying not to you know make the eyes look like they were bulging I think I managed it. I managed it better in this drawing than I did previous drawings. But, you know, you live, you learn. So, that's that. 
I did the eyes here and I didn't end up liking them. I hated the way I did the eyes here because I forgot how I draw eyes, which seems like a very stupid thing to forget or like how do you forget how to draw eyes when you draw eyes in everything you do. I forgot how to draw eyes, or rather I forgot how, my coloring process of them. I didn't remember, I couldn't remember exactly how I did it. And so I just did it the best way I knew how here. And like I said, I didn't end up liking it. And I do end up changing it towards the end. Like I, I completely erased the eye and I, I do it over. And then the, what I ended up with at the end was much better than what I did here.
I didn't really have a lot to say this video, you know, in ge generally speaking, I didn't have very much to say because the process really speaks for itself. I just wanted to touch on a couple things that I found interesting or fun about the journey. So, it's not my usual unentertaining jokes that, entertain my, that I entertain myself with. <laughs> Because I, I, find, I find myself very entertaining. I find myself watching back these videos and listening to myself and laughing at my own jokes. But I didn't make that many this time. I don't know if people find those jokes funny or not. If you do, you can let me know and then I, I'll try to be more comical. But today I just was like, you know what? This is pretty chill. I didn't need to say too much. I, I'm still just at this point just rambling. Go follow Destiny's Creation on Instagram. I'll have the link below. Follow me on Instagram because that's where you see where, where, blah, 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 where you'll see all of my pictures and some of my past pictures. I've been off Instagram for a while, so you're gonna see a very large shift in the quality of work. It's still me. I swear I'm not stealing any of this. These are my drawings. I just for a very long time had stopped drawing and stopped posting and now I'm back at it. I hope you like, comment, share, subscribe, you know, the normal YouTube things, do the bell, ring a ling a ling, and I hope you come I choked on my own spit. I hope you come back for another video. Bye!